Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. And we're now talking sports with our in-house correspondent, Wally Scott. And the issue we're focusing on here is underage football in Nigeria. And also the big news that uh, the Golden Eaglets have suffered a 3-2 defeat at the hands of the Young Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. And that's in the final of the 2021 under-17 championship, a Wafu championship at uh, the stadium in Lome on Monday. So Wally Scott, thanks for joining us Thank on The Breakfast. Did you expect this outcome? Honestly, I didn't. Um, I always felt that um, the Golden Eaglets were, this particular set of Golden Eaglets were not at par with the ones we've had. We've won too many tournaments to actually um, be here today. And um, we became mathematicians at the point. We lose against one person. They didn't win any match until they won against Burkina Faso and get into the finals of the tournament. And now we're here. Well, okay, good. But however, um, I want to believe that um, one of our major problems has always been age cheating. You know, we, we tend to cheat with our ages. And I've always said you can't cheat nature to a large extent. You know, you can actually always do things right. God might be merciful to you. But at 40, you can't do what a 19-year-old boy would do. What, what is the age uh, limit for the Golden Eaglets? Under 17. Um, so, you know, are you saying most of these players are, you know, above 17? And most times in Africa and in South America, um, we tend to, you know, lie about these things. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about the Nigerian team now. Nigerian um, team, um, yes. yes, we tend to lie. You know, we, we tend to say things. We've seen a, a twin. Do you think that some of the players in On the, the current team, yes. Golden Eaglets uh, team are above 17? Yeah, I think so, too. Have, so. they, have, th have that been proven or has that been proven? I can't prove that. But it's a norm in Nigeria that um, parents would come out and say, my child is this age, just because they want them to be like Mikel Obi, financially that is, um, Victor Osime tomorrow. But that's talk for another day. But the truth be said, we have not been able to nurture. We, we, we know about the miracle of demand when the Nigeria Super Eagles came from four goals down. We were four nil down and we came back and won that tournament. You know, those were the good old days. But we see a, a, a golden eagle now where we have to do mathematics. We have to hope that. Let me explain to you. This match is a four match tournament. And um, Nigeria had to lose the first match, draw the second match. So we, become, we, we began to calculate. Everybody then became a mathematician. We now said, okay. If Nigeria loses this, if Cote d'Ivoire wins against this, and that's what happened. If Cote d'Ivoire did not beat Ghana, or if Ghana did not beat Cote d'Ivoire, we will not get to a particular place. Fortunately, Ghana beat Cote d'Ivoire. So we actually had our bags packed, waiting for someone to lose and someone to win. Eventually, he walked our way. We unpacked our bags again, and then we went against Burkina Faso. A fantastic goal, though, against Burkina Faso, where he won one nil. Hope, well, miraculously, we did win, and then we qualified for the finals. Now, when you qualify for the finals, it immediately means that you will be at the Junior African Nations Cup, which we qualified for because we got to the finals. Now, against Cote d'Ivoire, I told um, my partner on the show yesterday, I said, listen, it was, we're lucky we actually got to get to the finals. If we didn't, we wouldn't have qualified for the... We haven't qualified for our age group competitions in the last three years. Do we have a coaching... I'm sorry. sorry okay, Anata, do we have a coaching problem also? There has to be. Mm. Because um, we have heard stories, like I said, stories, gossip, that um, our coaches tend to um, ask for financial support to actually get them into the team. But that's... No, no, no. no. That's um, talking about... I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about tactics now, you know, and, and actual coaching um, for each game and, you know, putting the perfect team together, you know, and, of course, getting them, in, you know, ready for each match. Do we have a, a, a coach that is capable of getting, t you know, these boys to win games? I don't know. Because the truth be said, um, um, the, the, the guys who are involved in these teams are raw talents. At this age... We don't need um, a name. We don't need a brand. We just need raw talent. Like I said to someone yesterday, the, pe the person who works in the BBC, and I said, listen, when it's underage tournaments, it's not a do or die affair. You don't have to win. Just groom the players. I spoke about an Argentine team 
that was disqualified from a tournament because they were not making mistakes on the 17 should make. I've never heard that before. But they actually were, were actually disqualified because under 17, at a particular age, is supposed to do some things wrong. So what mistakes are we talking about here? Um, when you play, play maturely and you're not, you're over 17, it's like, ah, good play. When you play maturely and you're under 17, you're like, this guy is playing more matured than under 17. But shouldn't let, if they have that ability to play maturely, why are they then losing games? I, I don't know, really. But you find out that um, in the past, most African teams on the 17 age grade competitions do much better than other teams because I think they're more matured. At, at a particular age, on the 17 should make on the 17 mistakes. And we don't make that because we are not on the 17, really. Um, so African countries have much more tournaments in age grade competitions than other countries. Um, so, you know... I'm not saying we are... This, we, this, this is why I was asking, you know, about the coaching earlier. You know, if you followed the games and you watched the way the, you know, the boys played, um, did you notice that we may have a tactical challenge, you know, with our, you know... The with, good with part the of this, generally? the good part of this is that just maybe, just maybe, these guys just could be under 17 because they are making under 17 mistakes. In the past, we've played very mature football not football that on the 17s would play. They just could be on the 17, you know? So for the first time in a long time, mm. we just might have real on the 17s at this point. All right. And then All right. it's, it's, a good for, it's good for the future of Nigerian football. The Super mm. Eagles just might have the correct ages in their team in mm. future. Now, the statistics show that uh, the Nigerian under-17 team is the most successful. So they've won uh, yeah. the under-17 World Cup five times, making them that most successful team. And uh, would you say this is just a setback and that they're just they're going to come out top? Bounce time? back. Yes. Definitely a setback. Um, it, it's good that we're making these mistakes. It's good that... I, I, I like to fail so I can succeed in future, so I can make corrections. This is good for us. We've now found out what mistakes we've made, what we've done wrong, what we can correct. And we, this team can only get better now. But thankfully, we have actually qualified for the, the competition proper. If, and now we now know what we did wrong, what we did right, or we can get better. And yes, yes, I think it, it's a good thing that we failed. It's a good thing we didn't actually win the cup proper. If we had done that, mm -hmm. yes, maybe we'd have like, the scheme is good enough, but his team is not good enough. All right, how many, how many, <laughs> just you know, in ten seconds, how many more games uh, uh, do you think Chelsea, Chelsea needs to play before they hit crude oil down there? Because they, <laughs> no, Chelsea they're will not. Down, 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 Chelsea down, will down. not hit crude, crude oil. oil. But like okay. I said yesterday on the show on Plus Sports yesterday with Udoka, Chelsea cannot stop Jimmy Vardy. Unfortunately, Vardy didn't score. It's a good day for me. Our man scored, Wilfred Ndidi. And um, do you think it's the same thing that's happened, you know, in the past, where Chelsea players simply get tired of a coach and decide we're no longer? I don't think so. But I, I see Lampard on his way out. I see Lampard on his way out. Really. All right, we need to go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, we do need to go. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, it's time for us to go. Thanks a lot for being a part of uh, the breakfast this morning. We've had a very interesting time. We want to wish you guys a very beautiful Wednesday ahead. Uh, remember to catch up on anything that you may have missed out on on social media. It's pretty simple. At Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you very much for being a part of our day. And thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day. Have a beautiful week ahead. Goodbye.